Hi, my gorgeous friends. Happy Saturday to you. How are you doing? How was this past week for you? Feel free to leave your updates below. I had a really productive Saturday last weekend. I went and did two spin classes back to back. I burned 900 calories. I was so pumped, excited, and proud of myself. I was like, yay! I have never done that ever. <laughs> I've never had the motivation to do it either, so I don't even know where that came from. And this past week, I got to spin class again on Wednesday for an hour, and I'm hoping to go tomorrow on Friday night. I'm filming this on Thursday, just so you're aware. And I've been eating really good. I haven't fallen off the wagon. I haven't had any cravings that I've felt the need to satisfy, but I hit a plateau this week and I didn't lose anything this week. I'm maintaining the same number, which is good, not going up on the scale. But yeah, I'm kind of stuck here right now. And I know the reason why I'm stuck here. For me, it's because I haven't been drinking enough water and I haven't been getting enough sleep. And I know that those are the culprits for me. And that's how I can break out of my plateau. So I'm working on that, I'm getting there. Ace has been having some really difficult nights recently because he's been sick and he's been coughing up mucus. So I've been having to stay up with him a lot at night. And unfortunately, there's nothing you could do about that. So eventually I'll get my sleep back and I know that I'll break out of this plateau as soon as I do. But I did wanna share with you today some tips and things that have worked for me in the past to get out of plateaus because I've been through them so many times after losing the weight with Jet and Gia. And certain things were consistent repeaters every single time that worked for me, but then other times, other things were working for me too. And I did some research on the topic too to give you some more ideas on how you could break out of a plateau. I wrote everything down because the one thing you have to know about me is I have a really bad memory. So I am guilty of writing everything down all the time, but hey, it helps me. And I found this really interesting fact. I was trying to figure out what is a plateau? How can I explain that to someone who doesn't even know what a plateau is? It's basically when your metabolic rate slows down as you lose weight, which is going to happen. It's bound to happen. If it doesn't happen, then you ain't human. <laughs> it's going to happen. So welcome it and just realize that it's temporary. As long as you stay focused, stay motivated, determined, you're going to break out of it. And hopefully some of these tips will help someone who's also struggling in a plateau right now or in the future. Number one tip, drink more water. I am so guilty of this. Before I had kids, I was really good about my water consumption, but after I had kids, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I am the last person that gets taken, of, taken care of around here. And I don't drink as much as I should. And I know that's a big reason for my weight loss stall right now too. And I found this interesting fact I wanted to share with you. It says water can boost metabolism by 24 to 30% for one and a half hours after drinking just 17 ounces. So that gives you incentive right there to start drinking right now. I mean, I should have a cup in my hand as I'm talking to you here. Ha, huh, there we go. One of the other things my husband told me most recently that I wanna start doing this week is drinking water before you eat. And I think he said to drink 16 ounces before your meal and that would help to increase your calorie burn something to remember, something to try. The other thing you can do is eliminate your carbs completely. Now, I know you can't get rid of 100% of your carbs. I mean, that's not possible. We need carbs to live. And even when you're on a low carb diet, you're still consuming carbs. But my thought process here is to eliminate anything extra that you are consuming. So I had mentioned last week that when I have really intense workout sessions, I'll usually consume bread or a potato, something a little more carb heavy on those days because I'm not exactly following a low carb diet. But when I hit a plateau, if I take out carbs completely like that and I add in more vegetables and get my carbs that way, I notice sometimes that I will break out of a plateau just by doing that, so something to try. You can also start tracking your meals again because sometimes we get into this rhythm and we're not exactly careful, cautious about what we are consuming and we can fall off the wagon without even knowing it. So when you go back and you start tracking things, it can help to refresh your brain and see where you may be consuming too much or even consuming too little. Because I know sometimes in the past, if I have not met my caloric intake that I'm supposed to meet each day, if I am well underneath it, you can still hit a plateau just by not consuming enough. So 
keep that in mind also. You can also change your exercise frequency or intensity. If you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over, your body can get accustomed to it and eventually it'll be like, ah, pfft, this is too easy. The second that you tell your body, no, we are doing this instead and you do something completely different, I don't care if it's yoga, Pilates, a hit circuit, core work, anything like strength training, anything like that that is outside the norm of what you typically do, it can really jumpstart your body and transition you to get out of that plateau. And I've done this in the past with spinning. I mean, I love spinning so much, but I know that if I continue to do it and I don't do anything else, then my body is like, <laughs> I ain't changing for you. So I'll add in strength training or I'll go do a hit circuit class. I want to take kickboxing. That's something that I haven't tried yet, but I've heard that it's really effective. So I may have to do a vlog on that in the future. Another thing that you can do is increase your protein. So I found out that protein boosts your metabolic rate more than fat or carbs, and it increases your calorie burning by 20 to 30%. And it says protein can also stimulate hormones in the body that reduce your appetite and make you feel full and satisfied. And I do notice that on days when I consume a little bit more protein than normal, I don't have any cravings. So I feel like that is a extremely true um, statement. And they say you want to aim for 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal. Another thing you can try is intermittent fasting. What is this? It's basically going long periods of time without eating anything at all. And I had some questions in last week's video about how often I eat and I only eat twice a day. Not because I want to. <laughs> I mean, my caloric intake is rather small. So eating twice a day fits into that window for me. And sometimes I'll have a couple snacks in between there too. But I'm so busy with my three kids that sometimes I just don't have the time to sit down and eat and take care of myself. And more often than, than not, I am forcing myself to eat when I do. So that's why I eat twice a day right now. But I usually eat at about 12 in the afternoon and then again at about nine o'clock at night. And I know that's not the best time to be eating, but it's what works with my schedule right now and it hasn't affected my weight loss eating at those times. And usually between the hours of 12 to nine, I'm not eating anything. I mean, sometimes I'll have a snack, sometimes I don't. And that intermittent fasting, I feel like has helped me lose a little bit more weight than if I hadn't been doing it. And the last thing that I already talked about is sleeping more. This is such a huge crutch for me when it comes to hitting a plateau. And I know more often than not, especially right now, that that's the reason why I'm in my plateau. And there's nothing I can do about it because my son, you know, he, he needs me still at night. He's a newborn, he's gonna be waking up frequently. So I'm just going to be patient with myself as I'm going through this until he starts getting onto more of a regular schedule. And just know that if you're not getting at least eight hours of sleep a night or enough that your body feels is necessary, then you won't notice a drop on the scale. Another thing I wanted to mention that can contribute to a weight loss plateau, if you are a woman, is your menstrual cycle. It will stall your weight loss more often than not. And it's usually because we're holding on to excess water during that time. So just realize that as soon as that's over, your weight loss will resume. Just be patient with yourself and realize, hey, it's all part of the grand scheme of things. Doesn't that make you mad though? I went to a spin class recently and they were talking about, okay, if you were a woman, you should have burned 500 calories. And if you're a man, you should have burned a thousand calories. And I was like, wait a minute, that's not fair. <laughs> How is it that my husband can eat nothing but egg whites for a week and he drops like 10 pounds and then I eat nothing but egg whites for a week and I drop two? Not that I did that, I'm exaggerating. I'm just saying it's not fair. <laughs> anyway, my goal for next week is just to remain determined, motivated, and focused on the end goal. I'm gonna break out of this plateau at some point. They typically don't last that long for me. So I hope that you found this helpful today. If you are in a plateau, if you've been in one and you wanna share tips that have worked for you, feel free to share below. I mean, I want this to be something that we can all share together. I mean, this 
I feel like is a great series for us to hold each other accountable. So share your tips below, share your progress below. How are you doing? Share recipes below. I mean, feel free to share whatever you feel like in the comment section on any of these videos. Now the recipes I have to share with you today are some of my favorites. I'm going to be saying that about all the recipes I'm sharing with you in this series because they're all really, really great. But this next one in particular is one of my favorites because it has such a fond memory attached to it. And when my dad was alive after I had Jet and I was losing the weight after having him, my dad was the one who turned me onto the keto diet. And he started doing it too at the same time. So it was really encouraging to have my dad on the diet with me and we would swap recipes back and forth. And this was one of the recipes that he shared with me and it became one of my new favorites at the time. And it's still one that I enjoy to this day. And you know, on diets, eggs are typically the one food that you can eat and not feel guilty about. But after eating eggs, Eggs so many different ways you start to get tired of them and you're just like Ugh, I really don't want eggs again so this is a way that you can change eggs up it's a really tasty recipe it uses a red bell pepper pesto sauce over the top it's divine so I'm really excited to share this one with you next and I'm also going to be showing you my cashew fudge recipe which is oh, amazing. If you're looking for something sweet that will not make you gain weight, you're going to love this one. For this recipe, you only need some very minor ingredients, beginning with one red bell pepper. You can also use green, orange, yellow. It's really up to you. I find the red to be a little bit more sweeter, so that's why I like to use that one. Pine nuts. You will also need basil and Parmesan cheese. Welcome to my world. <laughs> You also need eggs. I usually have about three with this recipe, but it's really up to you, however many that you want. So the first thing you want to do is cut up your red bell pepper into strips. It doesn't have to be fancy, don't worry about that. We're going to be putting this through a food processor once we're done, so you really don't need to make this look anything but like what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to spray a pan with some olive oil here and add the red bell peppers into the pan. And then we're going to bake this at 350. Once so we'll again. go ahead and preheat the oven here. And then we're going to put the red bell peppers in there to cook for 30 minutes. And now our red bell peppers are done. So we are going to take those out of the oven. Then you want to take a food processor and put your red bell peppers into the food processor first. Add one clove of garlic. Add as much basil as you want. I'm of the mindset that you can never have enough, so I don't ever really measure. I just estimate it. And then you want to add one tablespoon of your pine nuts. And the recipe says a tablespoon of Parmesan cheese, but my dad and I never really measured this. We would just add however much you feel you want to add. There's no real way to mess up this recipe, but I will tell you based on personal experience, if you add too much garlic to it, it can get really spicy. If you like spicy, add more garlic, but if not, one clove of garlic is perfectly fine. And then we're gonna process all this. And I am going to add just a little bit of olive oil, not that much. And there you have your red bell pepper pesto. It's so beautiful. And then spoon your red bell pepper pesto over the top of your eggs. And the beauty of this recipe is that you can do eggs a number of different ways. You can do them hard boiled, poached, sunny side up. And then I will usually serve that with a side of blueberries. Gonna break the maple syrup before we even get started. Hey friends, welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm showing you a dessert recipe and this will help to satisfy the sweet tooth within you without affecting the scale. I don't know about you, but I have a huge sweet tooth. Chocolate, brownies, fudge, ugh. 
All of that is my kryptonite. I love it, love it, love it, love it. And there are times in the dieting process when I am craving something sweet, but I don't want to ruin all the progress that I have made. So I have found recipes like the one I'm getting ready to share with you that do help to satisfy that sweet tooth, but you still get on the scale the next morning and drop the pounds, which we all want that. Now this is not something that you can overindulge in, I'll just tell you now. It's something you do have to watch your portion sizes on because if you overindulge in it, then you will see more weight gain than weight loss. So I'll just warn you ahead of time. So today I'm showing you how to make cashew fudge. Oh, this is the best stuff ever. And it's a really simple, easy recipe to make also. It only requires four ingredients total. First being cashew butter. You don't have to get anything fancy. Your regular cashew butter that you find at the store will do. I will just tell you up front that what threw me off about this when I first started using it is that the oil separates from the cashew butter, so you do have to stir it before you make it. So just be aware of that when you open it for the first time. It is kind of strange to see that. You will also need coconut butter. Again, something simple that you can find in most grocery stores. And maple syrup, pure maple syrup. If you want, you can also use sugar-free maple syrup. It's really up to you as to how you want to make this recipe for yourself. The final ingredient is vanilla extract. So let me show you how to make this. All right, so for this recipe, you will need a small saucepan about the size of this, and then you want to turn the heat on to medium-high. You will need to add three-quarter cup of the cashew butter into that saucepan. And then add three quarters of a cup of the coconut butter. I ran out <laughs> as I was making this video, so I'm only adding half a cup here, but it traditionally uses three quarters of a cup. And then add two tablespoons of the maple syrup. One, two. Finally, one teaspoon of the vanilla extract. This is not one that I usually measure. I just eyeball it and that's good enough. And then you want to mix this together until you do not see any more lumps. So everything should be completely smooth. And there you can see it's completely melted together. So you want to immediately transfer this to a glass dish. You can also use Tupperware. It's really up to you how you want to store this. And just pour it in there. And then you want to put this in the freezer and allow it to set for at least 30 minutes and it'll harden and then you can enjoy it. And this is what one looks like that has already been made and I do tend to keep it in the freezer simply because if you leave it out or you put it in the fridge, it gets too soft, it becomes hard to cut. It just, it's easier keeping it in the freezer. Now this is something that I typically have at night but we're already here. We're making it. Why not? So good. Very creamy, smooth. It's not too rich. Love. I guarantee you, you'll love it too. Let me know if you try those recipes out, what you think about them. In next week's video, I'm going to be sharing a recipe with you that is pan licking good. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that at all. I am being very literal with you. <laughs> and my husband did lick the pan afterwards. And I'll be honest with you, I wanted to be right there with him licking the pan. I just couldn't get my head in there. It's a chicken recipe that has the most delightful cream sauce that has a mixture of lime juice, cilantro, heavy whipping cream. It's utterly delightful. And my husband did want you to know that it was pan licking good. He's like, I want you to make a whole series of recipes that are pan licking good. <laughs> so we may just have to do that, but it's one of those that you would swear has a ton of calories to it, but it really doesn't. And I know you're going to love it if you try it. I'm really excited to share that with you next week. So stay motivated, stay on track. I will see you here again next Saturday, and I thank you so much for being here.